The analog pocket has managed to strike a fine balance between honoring the nostalgia of retro gaming and incorporating modern features to enhance the overall experience. The use of Gorilla Glass for the display not only ensures durability, it also adds a premium touch to the device, reflecting a commitment to quality. The ability to transform display into the original modes of classic handheld consoles. A meticulous attention to detail, which is crucial in providing an authentic retro gaming experience. While I will cover some critiques about uh, the D-pad and the shoulder buttons, hopefully this will be some feedback for those a more balanced perspective for potential buyers. The use of FPGA instead of traditional emulation certainly sets the analog pocket apart in terms of gaming performance. By directly reading the cartridge data, the device can achieve near zero latency and ensure an incredible responsive gaming experience. This is particularly important for games like platformers and racing games where split second reactions can make all the difference. Despite some minor flaws, the overall consensus seems to be that the analog pocket offers a comprehensive and immersive experience for retro gaming enthusiasts, making it a top tier choice for the handheld market. Well enough talk about this uh, little device, let's get some hands on. All right, so we're back. Um, this thing, holy crap, collects so much uh, fingerprints. It's like a fingerprint magnet. Now, I'm experimenting with light, trying out different things. Uh, I tried this once where I <laughs> didn't have, I guess I don't know the camera settings because this is my wife's old camera and I'm playing around with it because it was sitting there collecting dust. It is what it is. But I wanted to try this out for something different. So I was talking about the buttons. So if you see here, there's two shoulder buttons. I don't, I don't know, I just, they're fine as in build quality. It's just, they're kind of, they're smaller than the, uh, that I remember for the Game Boy Advanced SP. So let's try, and also with these buttons here, I know what they were going for. If you look at a, a Super Nintendo and this, these are smaller. The buttons are really small compared to my gorilla hands in these. Um, these are concave, I guess that's what you call this. And these, like, I don't even know here, if you can see, it's A, B, I think X, X and Y, and they're marked. See, they're marked. These, they're marked on the button. And because it's jet black, it you have to really look. Actually, no, they're not even marked. It's just blank, 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 blank. I don't like that. Like, most um, either have an ability to change these buttons or maybe even light them up, but I guess it's because of cost. But again, this is a premium device. It's around $250, I believe, American. And again, thank you for donating this to the channel. Uh, Stefan, he was the one who sent this in. So I'm gonna put this away. So let's take a look at some of the compatibility. I did bring some, um, uh, some games here and I bought some of my wife's old uh, Pokemon games. Most of these are Pokemon and a big fan of Pokemon games. Big, big fan. So let's try the one thing out of that. I'm going to show you something really cool. So if you go here, you turn it on. This again, the button here, I rather have an actual switch than holding down this button, but that's just me. So, bright screen, love it. It's Gorilla Glass, as I mentioned, so it's nice and tough. Now, if you want to actually play 
with an, uh, another control one of these or another like Game Boy it actually has the adapter so if you want to trade Pokemon you can totally do this that's kind of cool I wasn't expecting that so to exit out of this confirm all right so let's try this is where was the I bought this pirated game it was a it was a ROM hack that somebody put into a cartridge. I think I got it from AliExpress. Let's see if this guy plays. Yep, it plays fine. Again, I'm sorry if it's a little blurry. Uh, like anything in a channel, I find a, any channel that does something new. Option. Ooh. Oh, this is a new game. That's true. My wife never played this one. <laughs> because it's pirated. Is it pirated if it's an actual ROM hack? I guess so. So let's try... This is a... Uh, let's try a Game Boy Color. Do I have any Game Boy Colors? Okay, okay that was an... That was a... Um, Uh, oh, what's in here? No, that's all Pokemon stuff. Here, here's an old. This is a Japanese game, but you couldn't tell. This one has issues sometimes when playing it. I, make sure your controllers. Like, look at that screen. A bright screen. I remember when I first got this from my from my brother. We got the packing game, which was Tetris. But when I got this game, it was like so blurry on the original Nintendo uh, Game Boy. But, like they improved it with the Game Boy Color and all that. But whatever, it is what it is. Yeah, it looks fine. Right, I, this is totally playable. Now I do have the little stand, but I wanted to play this hands-on. So confirm. I did get some uh, Game Gear games, but I need the little adapter. And from what I heard, it, hopefully it's changed, but from what I heard, it's very hard to order stuff. It's either always out of, um, out of stock, or it takes like forever to get here. Let's see what else I can play with. Let's try a non. Okay. Uh, I got a few games here. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's a <laughs> that's a memory card. <laughs> wow, this is really interesting, Mike. Well, great content, Mike. Did I put? I don't know why I'm looking in here. It's all Pokemon. Nothing is anything wrong with that. And there's a little light. Why is there a little light here? Does it still work? No. Alright. So I know it's in here. I did. It is the uh, moving Nintendo games in a tin channel. Is this it? Yeah, here we go. So I got some nice cheap arcade games now I do have some ROMs that I installed I, I actually update this to, to activate there's like two FT, FPGA processors one for the emulate what well, not emulation it's not emulation one for the hardware and the other one for ROMs you install for cores Well, aren't you? <laughs> Let's go with uh, Frogger. Yeah, it works fine. Now there is an actual community around this. Now that the cores are open. 
and I found stuff here I'll show you in a minute uh, quick cartridge yes so if you go into open FPGA I actually got some ColecoVision Genesis some um, Turbo Graphics NES also handhelds I got Game Boy Vice and Game Gear so if I wanted to play uh, Game Gear I only have a few of them here I only have Chuck Rock Wow. Back. Chain. Uh, uh, let's go to chain. Uh, no. No. Game Boy Advance. What do I have in here? Run. Uh, <laughs> I got Doom. Of course, got to play Doom. And it loads the little core down here. It's not bad. Run the little core though. It's, it's kind of cute. It runs fine. It runs again. Uh, yeah. The screen is fabulous. Fabulous. Awesome. I guess you can program the buttons and maybe that's what they were going for. Let's make sure I'm in frame. But I don't know, like light them up. Like I don't care if you mark them. Maybe get a sticker and put like if I go here, like maybe put like a, a round sticker and put like uh, the letters B, A, X, and Y here, like around here. That's just me. This is like, if you buy this, you're getting a premium device. No, like, no, uh, no ifs, ifs, ands, or buts. Quit. Yes. Um, battery life. I had this thing sitting for a month next to me, and the battery life while just sitting there was fantastic. What's the battery life like right now? I don't know. 52. I, it's slow charging. It's not fast charging, which is fine. When I was on, I went to, I used a train a couple of times before I got my new car. And I would have loved this if I was playing this on the train. Awesome. I actually got a, um, uh, actually there's a bunch of, third party this little dirty stuff you can get for this this is a case it's a hard um, case for this oh okay and let's put I don't want to scratch it but if you just put it here like I got this from Amazon and yeah so this is like third party accessories you don't need to you know break the bank to buy some of the stuff for it but yeah that's it Again, thanks for so much, Stefan, for this device. I get my hands on it. But, uh, uh, you know, for the YouTube stuff, you know what to do. Hit the little subscribe button or hit the little bell for more videos like this. Until the next video, this is Mike, signing off.